Call of Duty Black Ops 2 came out in a unique time frame for the Call of Duty franchise. The Modern Warfare trilogy had just concluded and for the most part, Treyarch was seen as the more inferior developer in the Call of Duty series. But then Black Ops 2 came out. So how does this game hold up five years later? Is it still active or is it dead? My name is Elijah and today on Rocket Sloth, we are taking a look at Call of Duty Black Ops 2 in 2018. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 takes place for the most part a few decades after the events of the first Black Ops and follows Alex Mason's son during a futuristic war. However, about half of the game takes place during the 70s and 80s which is a nice touch as it's an era that we haven't really gotten to see in the Call of Duty franchise at least at that point of its release. Not that the single player is the most important feature that makes or break a Call of Duty game, but we still don't want to spoil too much of the story, so we won't go into too much detail, but for the most part, the story here is probably one of the weaker narratives in the franchise. It's not that there is anything jarringly bad, but there really wasn't anything unique that this story offers that you couldn't have experienced in a different Call of Duty game. Sure, the time periods are good, but the writing and narrative itself isn't anything too special. The voice acting is actually pretty good despite the lackluster story, and the futuristic environments are cool, however the fact that there are multiple endings actually takes away from the narrative. There are several moments in the single player campaign that if you didn't know exactly what you were supposed to do, you will lose your chances of getting the good ending, and it really takes away from the feeling of being on a gripping, well-written adventure. Nothing in particularly is necessarily jarring, but overall the campaign does feel a little cluttered at times with this mechanic. I mean, the campaign does have some pretty good moments. There's some really good story elements that are nice to be touched on, especially involving characters from Black Ops 1, but there were some decisions that were made that are just kind of weird to me. Like, for instance, they brought back a character that clearly died in Call of Duty Black Ops, and there was really no point to bringing the character back. There was enough of a cast of characters around where it just seemed kind of unnecessary. Maybe they brought him back just to promote the game, but it just was a really weird story decision. Also, even in the good ending, there's a fate that happens to one of the characters that is just kind of dumb. It's, it's really just BS, and I felt kind of cheated after that. I do have to say the futuristic looking world is cool, and I like all the different areas that you get to go to, and there's some really cool moments with vehicles and flying and horseback riding, and, and that's cool. It's just the story itself really got cluttered in the mix of trying to have multiple endings, which doesn't really need to be in a Call of Duty game. But where the game really thrives is in its multiplayer, and honestly, this is probably one of the last genuinely good Call of Duty multiplayers we have had. Black Ops 2 introduced a pick 10 create a class system, which is levels above the previous type of create a class system that really allowed for balanced classes that players could fully customize, and I really appreciate that. I think it's really cool that you can substitute a secondary weapon for a third attachment, or if you want an extra perk, at least there's a way to have it. I think it was a really cool idea that was executed perfectly. And the weapons in this game work flawlessly, and for the most part are pretty balanced. Sure, there are a few guns here and there that could use some more tweaking, but at its core, this game is absolutely solid and I can appreciate that. Being able to level up your guns is awesome too, and there's a lot of variety on camos, which is pretty nice. The maps are varied and there are quite a few maps which makes me happy, but I gotta say, some of these maps really contribute to why the multiplayer is so solid all around. The levels are clean and clear with perfect flanks that rarely feel unbalanced. I don't know what happened after this Call of Duty and maybe it was an addition of advanced movement, but Call of Duty nowadays, even World War II, just don't feel just as solid as this game did. The maps in this game were able to emulate tight corridors without making the maps feel small in close quarters, and Call of Duty Ghosts or Call of Duty World War II are often criticized because the maps are so wide open. The maps in Black Ops 2 can be big at times, but it doesn't take away from the action that is going on, or you don't necessarily feel like you're dying around every single corner. 
I mean, for instance, the multiplayer had some really great maps like Hijacked. It was a simple yacht, but it had a third dimension to the three lane setup that really made moving across the map and avoiding getting spawn trapped a little bit easier than, for instance, the map we have in World War II that is just really poorly done. My only real complaint about the multiplayer maps is the color palette used is very similar across the board and doesn't have the same variety that Modern Warfare 2 may have had, but that's really nitpicking at this point. I mean, there is a really cool night map that has dubstep music playing, and, and what's more 2012 than that? I would almost argue that this multiplayer is just as good, if not better, and definitely more balanced than Modern Warfare 2. The multiplayer is pretty solid still too, even today, and I love the fact that they added leaning into the PC version of the game. It's something that is commonplace in PC games, and it works well with the mouse and keyboard. It's backwards compatible on the Xbox One too, which gives it a much larger player base, and for the most part, finding a game is decently easy, especially if you play popular games like Team Deathmatch. Much easier than Black Ops 1, for sure. The PS3 definitely has the smallest population, so you'll have the most trouble finding a game, but if you're on at a good time, Team Deathmatch shouldn't be too much of a problem. There are hackers here or there, unfortunately, but surprisingly, it's not too bad. It can get annoying at times, but usually you can find a new lobby pretty easily. Zombies makes its triumphant return here too, and it's alright. I would say it's better than a lot of the zombie modes we have gotten in later Call of Duties, but still not quite as good as the zombie catalog featured in Call of Duty Black Ops 1. With the base set of the game, you get a map called Transit, which is huge. So huge you have to take a bus around town, and it can be confusing at first, but once you get a hang of it, it can be fun to hold off zombies. There are also individual levels that can be played on, but they are just taken out of sections from Transit. I did really enjoy Farm though. It was a nice, fun, clean, small zombies map. Grief Mode was introduced here too, which essentially was 8 person versus survival, which actually had some great competitive gameplay. But unfortunately, unless you have 8 people, it's really hard to find a game in this specific game type. The DLC zombie maps were not my favorite, and since it's hard to find multiplayer games with the DLC maps anyways, I don't really recommend picking up the DLC here. I, I don't know. With the new maps, I feel like it got really over the top complicated with the easter eggs and took away from the addicting feeling of seeing how long players could hold out. I know some people love the easter eggs, but when that's the whole point, not surviving, it stops being an easter egg and becomes zombies with objectives. And I'm not really a fan. There's a DLC level that takes place in 1930s Alcatraz, and the concept is cool, the world building is fantastic, but it gets so clogged up with a convoluted easter egg that really distracts from the point of zombies being a survival mode. I guess I'm pinpointing against Alcatraz because it's the first zombies that you can complete and finish. Which like I said, it probably works great for some people, but for someone like me who used to just love zombies as a chill, see how long we make it type of game type, it, it really kind of took away that feeling of, well did we survive long enough? Because there was always that element, well if we just beat it, we, we beat it. On top of that, with zombies, most of the zombie maps have to do with a different set of characters than the zombie characters we had from Black Ops 1, and those were kind of the fan favorite characters, and it's kind of a shame that they weren't in most of the zombie maps in this game except for the last one. And it kind of says something when in Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombie Chronicle DLC, where they pick the best of the best zombie maps, there was only one map from Black Ops 2 included, but Black Ops had four zombie maps included, and World at War had three zombie maps included, because Deriz was also already included, which was the fourth map. Nuketown Zombies can be bought as a standalone DLC map, and it's pretty fun actually. If you can get it at the right price, I think it's only five bucks. It's challenging and really fun too with friends. I made it to round 33 with three other people, and it was a blast. Overall, Black Ops 2 is a pretty fun experience. The campaign is rather lackluster, but you'll get your money's worth out of the multiplayer, and zombies really add some extra depth to the game. 
This game in 2018 gets a solid 8 out of 10 on Xbox and PC, and a 7.5 out of 10 on PS3 due to the smaller player populations. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to play the Wii U version to see if it's still alive or not, but maybe that'll be a video we get to one day in the future where we look at all of the Wii U and Wii ports of Call of Duty, who knows. But you know what else is cool besides Black Ops 2? Limited edition Rocket Sloth hoodies. We really never have sold merch before, but there are 20 Founder Edition hoodies for sale right now. There's only 20 of them. When they're gone, they're gone. They say Founder on the back. It's really cool. We've never sold anything before besides one hoodie to someone who bought a hoodie that's no longer for sale on the Rocket Sloth store. So other than that one guy, you guys can be the first people to ever rock a Rocket Sloth Founder Edition hoodie. We will never have another Founders Edition hoodie again. Once again, there's only 20 of them available, so if you want one, you can represent while we're still this small channel trying to stay above the 4,000 hours watched mark on YouTube. If you don't want a hoodie, you can also support us on rocketsloth.net and become a member of the Rocket Squad by pledging however much money you want every single month to help support us. Or at the very least, if you want to play Black Ops 2 with us, check out our Discord. We have a pretty strong community of Call of Duty players over there, and uh, we're always down to, to play some Call of Duty, so if you want to hang out, check out our Discord in the link down below. We'll catch you guys next time with a brand new video. Bye guys.